आपका ये है अब ये नतुल से कितने साल पहले इतनी दूर Welcome to Serendipity Arts Virtual, a web-based festival presented by Magma HDI, Truth Must Be Told, and co-presented by Global Shore. Hope you all are well and keeping safe and well. Welcome to Serendipity Arts Virtual again, our new initiative responding to the digital space. Uh, we start on the 4th of December uh, with multiple, uh, with, and, and we presented a mul multitude of projects hosted on the internet, uh, straight to your screens uh, with new projects, workshops, performances, and other panel discussions. Please follow our calendar for upcoming projects on www.serendipityartsvirtual.com. When we started to explore the digital space and what the virtual as a site has to offer, we spoke to our curators extensively, going through multiple conversations and discussions. And Virangana came forth as a strong force in diving straight into the virtual void. She brought in exciting ideas to take us through this experimental ride and together we managed to put an extensive team of superheroes bringing our ideas to virtual void, virtual reality. We are happy to have Virangana Solanki with us along with Samarth Gulati, Ashish Dubey, Aditi Dash, Farah Mullah, Abhinay Kopar, Koparzi, Studio Olimingas, Nepal Picture Library and The Packet for today's panel titled Future Landing, Grips, Departures and Losing Control. As part of our upcoming project, Future Landing, which shall be live on the 14th of December, curated by Virangana. Virangana is also an independent curator and writer. Her curatorial discourses uh, has primarily focused on art practices within the extended South Asian context. She was uh, the 2019 Brooks International Research Fellow at Tate Modern in the curatorial and photography department and a resident at Delfina Foundation. Virangana is currently based in India. Before we move into with this panel and the session, just a few points that I would like to uh, inform you all and want you guys to keep in mind. If your Wi-Fi router is weak, we recommend to connect through your mobile hotspot for a more stable experience. In case you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box below. Without further delays, I would hand over the virtual mic to Virangana take for this conversation. Welcome everyone. Thank you very much, um, Kasif, for the kind introduction. And thank you to the entire Serendipity Arts Festival team, especially uh, Smithy Moksha and Keith, who have been a course to support an instrumental sounding board uh, for the birth of Future Landing. 
And um, three of them are in fact what we have called the foundation team of Future Landing, which while um, the exhibition is under the curated section of this year's festival, it's really where the entire structure is a broad base where everyone on today's panel has contributed to what has led to Future Landing and what it will evolve in the coming years. And uh, joining me today on the panel is uh, the rest of the foundation team. But before I uh, move into everyone taking over through, taking us through what they have worked on, I wanted to briefly give a background on what the thinking process of future landing was and how we arrived at this structure. Um, so thinking of the internet as a site, because when we initially started having our conversations, it was before we were in this COVID-19 situation, still thinking of a physical space for a show. But when we moved to looking at the internet as a site, it was really shifting into looking at um, something online that would, wouldn't just be an exhibition, given that all of us have immense screen fatigue today. And thank you for being here despite that. But at the same time, trying um, in some way to translate the feeling of being at Serendipity in Goa. And uh, this also meant not being able to divide ourselves to be a part of everything that was happening at different venues at the same time. It was acknowledging the fact that we had to give up one thing for another. And that was also letting go of control of our time and being present in multiple spaces and always feeling that we'd missed out on something else, which is hopefully the feeling that you'll have through future landing because everything is constantly changing. Nothing can be bookmarked. You keep coming back to what you think you've missed out on, but it's already passed. And so one of the briefs, um, I mean, some, the main brief really when speaking to the artists was quite open, but with the idea of um, storytelling, time and the memory of experience at the core of their work and keeping in mind that um, change time and the future had to play a role in whatever project or the way they chose to create this. And um, considering the pace at which the future arrives on the internet, this was fairly challenging, but I think it's happened for each one of them and they'll take you through it as a part of um, the journey today. But before that, the model of um, Future Landing works as a sort of a virtual studio for five artists at a time, where each one's work and page a studio to say activates itself through the user participation. So the first phase of this model will run for a year after which each artist passes on their space to another creative practitioner of their choice. I'm just gonna pull out an image to show you how this um, started. So this was um, a very raw uh, drawing, so to say, of what my diary looked like when I started, which very soon I stopped making notes when I realized how refined the sketches that were coming from um, our development and designer team started looking like. But it was again where um, the drip system was born. Uh, and this was really where we started thinking about the drips as being independent trigger parts uh, created by each artist. So the way it works is that the departure points are where each experience becomes unique and there's no way for any of us to control this. It's quite similar to what our everyday situations are. And while all of this, and I hope all of you have a lot of fun interacting with the website as well. And this is just the beginning of what the journey is. It's also so much a reflection of our everyday and what the platform and the works of Future Landing do. You'll find yourself getting lost in many ways in the works of the artists. Um, difficult to extract yourself from the pages, yet becoming quite mindful of how you are situated in them, the way your body is reacting to them, the way you are reacting to them, and what you take away from them in terms of uh, an image, a screenshot, or even just your interpretations of uh, what is given to you in the most random manner, because it's no human who's controlling this, but a code that controls what you end up seeing. And um, all of this really becomes a sort of a metaphor of how we are dealing with the everyday situation around us, even today. Um, and as the artists pass uh, things on, they land up with, uh, with only the names on the drip system and no other residue. So it's also 
where nothing on this um, website is ever a permanent archive and um, a couple of them will be talking about archives as well. But before I hand over, and this is also where I stopped making sketches in my diary when um, I realized that, they, and I tried moving into a computer sketch, but I then realized that um, Aditi, Abhinay, Ashish and Samarth had started deciphering all my abstract drawings and notes which I was sending them. And we had a very long reference reading list, but one particular book which I have gone back to very often is um, Touch, Sensuous Theory and Multisensory Media by Laura Marx. And um, this was a note which I think um, was a takeoff point for a landing page. And uh, with this, I'm gonna hand over the screen to Aditi, Abhinay, Ashish and Samarth who will take us through what the build of Future Landing has been with all these abstract notes as well before the artists take you through things. And that's where the confusion always starts. Who starts speaking? <laughs> because there's too many people to talk about too many things. Uh, it's been a crazy one uh, trying to build this uh, all this while. Uh, also because we, we the challenge itself was keeping it out of control, but still not overwhelming, but still get people close to uh, uh, a state where they almost are losing control, but they can sort of try to escape it. Uh, it's that balance, right? Uh, where uh, it's, it's difficult to find that. Uh, I, are we gonna be showing people what, what we have done? Uh, or Samar, do you want to take us, uh, talk us through a little bit about what the landing page itself represents? I think everyone will get to see it in the 14, but it'd be exciting to see how all the challenges that we've been discussing all through and really just these translations of learning new languages from each other in some way as well. Uh, yeah, so Aditi can really tell us about stuff that way, right? Aditi, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, I was saying that uh, when Virangana first reached out uh, and she showed me the in initial sketches, of course, uh, it took me a little bit of time to really understand what uh, the drip system was about. I was uh, not quite sure if I entirely got it the first time. So after a few uh, discussions that we had and after we exchanged a few ideas and interesting things that we essentially saw um, or came across uh, through different websites, I started wrapping my head around the idea of how exactly are we going to represent visually all the artists that uh, eventually will become a part of Future Landing even in the future. Uh, without it having disrupt uh, the experience that the viewer is going through when they land on the page at first. So I think through a process of uh, understanding and eliminating um, visuals that we probably did not require, we ended up with a, a pretty a clean and minimal overall approach for the landing page in terms of interaction. But I'm sure when you first experience it, it's nothing like something you might have come across before because there's a whole range of visuals just waiting to come and uh, surprise you as soon as you enter the landing page. So I think that's what's really exciting. And I also found it really interesting that uh, the space itself keeps changing and nobody really, not one person has any control over it because it keeps extending from one artist to another, which is why it's a space that is constantly in evolution, which is what was very interesting to me as an idea itself. And yeah, I think, uh, and I hope that we've uh, come up with a good visual language for you guys to engage with. And uh, I think Samarth and Ashish can also tell you a little more about how the coding process went behind all of this, because that's really the most challenging part of it all. So, uh, yeah, so before I like, talk anything about coding, I'm going to like touch up on uh, the changes and like losing control pit that happened uh, at least 
from my perspective so uh, so like uh, in in my day to day work i uh, generally like work with a lot of developers and uh, we generally know like what to build and like who who to build for but uh, working on this project uh, we didn't have a really uh, we we had a really diverse uh, potential audience and uh, we kept figuring out things as we uh, go day by day uh, so so there was uh, there was like a lack of structure as compared to uh, the day to day work that i do but i think uh, that lack of structure also made it like a lot more exciting uh, now that i look back uh, to like what we have uh, talked about and what we built so far so yeah yeah and just connecting on to what ashish was saying uh, again my day to day work is mostly around user experience design where you start with a specific user in mind and possibly conduct interviews and this was going on the opposite side it was probably um like an artistic exploration where you're trying to uh, manifest something of a paragraph and it took us a while to get to it because we started off with uh, drawing sketches visuals but then it was like possibly halfway through this whole discussion around the concept that we said wait a second if it is all about that concept we should have a discussion about the concept so it was during that call that it finally clicked us that okay it's about future landing and then the point of it is that it's always landing like it's always the future which is about to arrive and uh, this whole notion about you are in the present but then there is something which is about to hit you um so that's a constant anxiety about the future per se and that's what we want to manifest onto the landing page itself where you're constantly being bombarded by something which is coming new to you and then how do you what metaphors do you use for that and then few of the metaphors which i think aditi came up with was this warping of the whole space time and like how in science fiction uh, a lot of these uh, visuals are represented to show how uh, space and time are intertwined and then are then being blended uh, with constant animation or like movement of images or what you're seeing so uh, the uh, flip side of this as i've been ever saying uh, was not to overwhelm the user so that was the balance we're trying to walk on that tight rope figuring out okay are we going to possibly distract people too much and not be able to even find or like go through to the artist pages because that's where it's a landing page after all I'm not using the future landing landing here but okay yeah uh, so uh, how do you make sure you provide a conduit to the artist pages but also have them understand what the metaphor we were going after thank you i think that's um, that's pretty much what every page has done so far from what i've seen everything's sort of hypnotic where you want to stay but you want to leave at the same time to be able to get to something else and um, maybe avina you can start with speaking about your project and then you can move to farah since both of you are working with sound and location and the self in some way okay so uh, the initial idea for this uh, actually came from a piece uh, uh, a little experiment ashish himself had uh, shown me a while back uh, where he had these uh, dots that would uh, you go on the website and there would be these dots uh, that would represent each visitor in the website and they would just play a very simple pattern uh, and you could move around in a two dimensional plane and uh, it'll place people in in uh, it'll place the sound in your head based on what your position is uh, in relation to the other uh, dot now i had been playing with uh, a lot of different tunings so my other life is all in music production and uh, especially music production with algorithms and uh, i was exploring different tuning systems and uh, there is a huge library of about uh, 3000 or so uh, tuning systems from various different cultures that have uh, been assembled uh, so I, i thought why not take that 
as a representation of where people come from. Uh, so a lot of my music is very patterned, uh, very inspired by artists like Steve Reich, who all they do is they take a very simple motif and just by the repetition of that motif and slight changes in the phase of it will uh, create different, um, it, sometimes these things are almost falling over each other. Sometimes you're just hypnotized by the, uh, the, the repetition of it, uh, of it itself. Uh, some say even hip hop is kind of that because uh, even though it it uh, not everyone understands that as art, the uh, rap, all of that, but this is taking that in a very abstract sense with um, very monotone instruments, um, but just exploring patterns of uh, with tunings. Um, now, what what uh, seems very interesting in this is uh, people are in, uh, are represented by their cultures in some way or the other. Sometimes uh, it is um, hard for some cultures or people from some backgrounds to come and and interact with other backgrounds. So uh, everyone kind of has to adjust themselves to come in harmony. Uh, so that's one more thing I'm trying to explore with this. Uh, hopefully, uh, it's all going to make sense to people. But if it's not, uh, I, I think we're still going to have fun with it. Thanks, Abhinav. Farah, would you like to show us some of your um, I mean, you've been looking at sound and space as well in some way, but also how we locate ourselves in that, which, okay, I'm going to let you go and maybe you should take us through some of that too. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, I work with sound. So like, when you talk about sound, you really can't separate space and time from like when you're talking about sound. So they're equally intertwined. Uh, the beginning of this project was almost as we all I think experience was chaos and like trying to make sense from it, which is exactly what happens uh, in our acoustic environment with acoustic ecology, which is like most of what my research is about. So what this piece essentially is trying to do is make sense of reality via our landscapes in a way, but it's sort of generating this sort of contemplative space where the viewer can't distinguish one from the other. I think uh, like talking about a drip system, I think these sounds, the virtual sounds have sort of percolated into our daily lives without us even realizing how much of our environment has virtual sounds in it, sounds that don't actually have a natural source to it. Like, you know, sonic branding and things like that. They're so deeply embedded in our culture, just like the internet. So, you know, when we talk about the internet, we're always talking about future. We're always talking about a landing page, something that is, you know, to arrive yet. So I think that's where it sort of started taking root. And uh, yeah, so it was trying to give you a contemplative space about, you know, to take a step back and listen to your environment. And what the piece essentially does is it converts your so wherever you access this piece on your device, any device, it sort of activates the images on the screen and the images blur in and out of focus, almost sort of like the quote where I'm gonna read out at the beginning. And I think I'm just gonna show you a quick teaser if that's all right. And uh, feel free to open your microphone and make noise because it's audio reactor. Okay, I'll have to share screen here. So as you go ahead and make noise, like the, the speed, the tone, it changes the hues and intensities on the screen. I'm not sure if the internet speed is supporting this at the moment, but uh, just to give you a rough idea. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know if it's working right now, but uh, just so. And yeah, I mean, I would really like to say thank you for making a virtual festival a possibility because I think uh, Serendipity has always worked on site and facilitated how do I 
Okay, so anybody has always worked on the concept of like making ac everything accessible with this festival. And I think truly translating a festival onto a site, a website, was also something we were thinking about the notion of what a site is at this point. Like, you know, where are we living our lives? On our computers most of the time and accessing and speaking to people. It is sort of alienating. So it's just sort of like something to play around with and not to take too seriously as we play. So yeah, have fun. Thanks, Clara. I mean, the other thing which we had spoken about when we started coming up with this was the idea of deep fakes as well, uh, mm -hmm. which no, go for it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, also like everything being a simulation, I think me and Abhin and I also had an overlap while we were sort of brainstorming about this. We end up sending each other videos of real life things that are actually cake to begin with. <laughs> So, so, so that, you know, that's also something that so started off the idea of virtuality. What is real in this day and age? You know, we're talking about screens, but hyperreality has been embedded so deeply into our everyday lives. Everything is sort of like a simulation at the moment. You know, we're talking about concepts like touch, like, you know, we're talking about tactility with equipment. We're talking about sensory overlaps. We're talking about food additives, which are emulating different flavors. So it's just a sort of play on, you know, like question what reality is. Is it even real? Which is also something I was thinking about when we were like talking about block time and what it entails, you know, like how everybody perceives time through a particular sort of visual cone from your point of reference. So reality might not be the same for two different people viewing the same incident at the same time. So, so uh, yeah, I think I can go on and on. So I'm gonna stop here. <laughs> But um, taking from that, it's also about from looking at images and looking at things that already exist, how images become different departure points. And for Nepal Picture Library, where um, we have Shikhar here from Nepal Picture Library, where we've, um, where I think there's so much about an archive in there, but it's also about how the archive becomes different departure points for the future depending on who's reading it and how it's being read but also how we are then making projects and creating things out of it and um Shikha, would you like to take us through what you all are doing for future landing and maybe even share some of nepal picture library's archive with us Sure. Uh, thank you, Virangana. Thank you, Serendipity team, for this invitation. Um, let me just... I was told not to share the platform right now, but I'll share a screenshot of... Uh, or, or the archive. Um, wait, let me just figure this out. Okay. Can you guys see me, hear me? Okay. Um, so we, as Nepal Picture Library, I'll, are always looking at ways to disseminate the work, uh, projects, and the archive. So this opportunity, especially of this nature, um, a virtual one, we feel comes at the right time. Um, for those who are new to us, uh, Nepal Picture Library has been a digital archive since its inception in 2011. Uh, we choose to go digital route because it has allowed us for more access and engagement, which is very important for us. Um, also because we are less interested in the materiality of the photographs um, and more interested in the information and history that the photographs point us to. Um, over the years working in the archive, we have seen how images are not fixed in their meaning or the intention when they were created. Um, we ourselves at Nepal Picture Library have been using images across projects, creating new meaning and reinterpreting them. Um, we have also always been surprised to see how people in interpret the images when they go through the archive or the public exhibitions that we do, uh, mostly about what was seen in the images, but also sometimes what was, what was, what was not seen. Uh, these engagements have been mostly one-to-one, -one, where people visit the archive at our office in Nepal. Uh, so, you know, through that idea, so through the Future Learning Platform, we are happy to open up the possibility of more diverse readings and interpretations of the archive, especially since these histories are relatable histories across the region. Um, 
we hope that these interactions through the interactive storyboard that we have built, um, that is being built, uh, uh, generate more dialogues and the resulting documentations through screenshots and screen grabs and that you can play around with uh, for a more deeper understanding of the project and the archive. Uh, we have decided to share for now what the images that you are looking uh, on your screen are images from the uh, Dalit the Quest for Dignity, a project that we uh, Nepal Picture Library did in 2016. Uh, because we feel the conversation around caste is an ongoing one and this particular archive would have resonance with wider regional audience. We are looking forward to people engaging um, and responding to this collection through the platform and by doing so we hope they too will contribute to keeping the conversation going. Um, so yeah, we look forward to adding more projects and um, collections um, from the archive um, in the future as this uh, for the whole year uh, that this is uh, happening. So it's been an amazing experience and thank you Virangana and Serendipity team and the you know the tech team behind it. I've still been in conversation with most of you. Uh, uh, to make this project come to life. So yeah, really excited to look forward. And also, Giringa, since you've been, you know, the, uh, you, uh, if, you, if you have any observations or because you've been the one who came up with the I, idea and proposed us, us the idea. So. I, I think it's also based on so many conversations I've been having with you all, with you, with the Vasman, Tara, but how, and it's about how we are, just thinking, I mean, on one hand, you're creating archives, but then it's also about what, how in the future these, this may not be read in the same way. And um, like you mentioned that these storyboards and, and the screen grabs, which is what the users create, which is where the users end up coming in and they yeah. contribute into a way of looking at what the future archive, I mean, the future readings of temporary ways in which people have created storyboards from the archive itself. Yeah. Which get so, added to the archive again, which is mm, quite exciting. Yeah, we're looking forward to yeah seeing how people interact with it. So time to go. But also um, taking from how archives move into uh, creating myth in some way. And that's what uh, Studio Olio Mingus, we have Dhruv here with us in Studio Olio Mingus. And they've been working with the idea of history and time and um, creating their own stories from that, but a lot of it goes into myth, but it's so real that you'd almost think that these were all true. But if they become, again, when you come back to the page every time, it constantly refreshes itself and each interaction evolves a different meaning and a different storyline. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ron, for the for the invitation to uh, be a part of the festival. Um, because we are uh, talking about stories that are about time and repetition, most of all about precision and exactitude. I, I want to be articulate in, in how, I, how I talk about the project or introduce it. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see a little bit of uh, the, the visuals from the project while I read something out, uh, if, if that's okay. Sorry, one second. Fear is the precise scale uh, on which to trace the contours of belonging. How afraid you are as a citizen and how tenuous your claim to society is measured by the extent of your transgressions against the imagined boundaries of a nation. Boundaries that are made concrete by the repeated trace of history because repetitions after all are the source of all our certainties. You find them in the replicable experiments of verifiable fact in the repeating barter of truths that we tell about ourselves and about our world. You find repetitions in the ticking of a clock um, and in the impulse to multiply and to copy and proliferate an ordering of chemical bonds and protein filaments to form delicate beings capable of duplicating themselves, perhaps simply to be reassured of their own existence. But then again, our repetitions, uh, the domain of ghosts, are they not the source of all vague imprints and copying errors and confusions about the original which plague our function of truth? Are they not the midwives of lies, lies and unreason, of cacophony and duplication of profusion and want? 
Do we not find a repeated litany on the lips of the fanatic as he leaps to tear down an emblem? Or the repetition of an illicit image in the grainy video from a surveillance camera that probes into the lives of the original beings with its replicable record of their actions? Perhaps we are bound by repetitions as the result of our lives marked by a calendar of circular time. And the repetitions and the uncertain repetitions of a truth is a collection of short interactive fragments that ponders the nature of exactitude and the profound cost of marking this time. It is an odd compilation of stories about people caught in the intimate dance between timekeeping and truth making, stories of repetitions and hauntings and finger bones and xeroxes, imprints and doppelgangers, and the countless ghosts who linger between the finite delineations of a clock. Stories of plastic time and elastic truths crafted with a del deliberate inex inexactitude to imitate the trace of a winding circle, the satisfying click of a key rotated into a lock or the spring wound into a taut embrace. A modest and perhaps a clumsy attempt at assembling a pastiche of these mechanical imprints of labor mischievously reanimated in a medium where an hourglass is just another cursor, where precision is no longer marked by the thin edge of a metal filament, but by an uncertain floating point of infinitely divisible numbers with a grinding labor of magnifying re reality into discrete intervals is a trivial task, and where the delineations between truth and fiction are as thin as an electron, so that perhaps we can become a little bit more comfortable with the idea that all truths and identities are always assemblages, uncomfortably put together, ever-changing collages of ideas about who we are allowed to be and who we once identified as. Thank you for that, Dhruv. That was really beautiful. And um, for those of you who are watching, I mean, this is going to be an interactive game. So what you saw moving on your screen is really something that will be activated through the way you choose to move through it, through. Yeah, uh, and so um, the, uh, the interaction is very deliberately limited. Uh, we, we usually work with games, that is, uh, that, that is you know, the medium that we function within. And, and here, uh, all you can do is move linearly um, forward in, in, in the story or choose not to. And that is the only interaction you really have. Uh, you're tracing uh, 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 the imprint of a clock or a winding me mechanism or simply a circle over and over and over again uh, to animate these images at different speeds. Um, till you conclude a story or not again. Uh, and, and that is the extent of the interaction, you know, except the stories change and then your intensity of interacting with them might change. Yeah. And, and whether you ever come back to it might change. And it's also where you'd be um, adding stories as you go along, but I'm going to come back to that a little later. Um, but moving into the packet who uh, our fifth artist, we have Halik and Sandev here from the packet, who is a collective of eight artists. And what we've, um, I think what, while we were talking, there was so much about the future, but then again, for those of you, and you all should follow everyone actually who's here on Instagram, but for the packet, when there are eight people controlling one Instagram account, how this incident of, um, a chance of incidents of images and how, we have constantly have this pairing changing comes in where everyone's put in their own archives and what you'll see through their work is um, again, this constantly changing future that arrives, but it again becomes an archive for the future for you all to then work on something else. I'm gonna let you all go for that now. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Virang, and thanks to the whole team, um, especially just a big shout out to sort of the team that worked on designing. We've just kind of been sitting through that and, you know, have been kind of addicted to it and just wanted to also say that we appreciate your work a lot. Um, something, something I, th I guess, talking about this, um, it's, it's hard to talk about this project in the absence of maybe introducing what the packet is, because I feel like this project is very much an extension of the packet's practice. Um, so I guess, yeah, we were just a bunch of friends, artists, whatever, um, who were meeting up in an apartment um, for about a year or so, and just starting conversations with each other. And that conversation 
explode into maybe um, us trying to think about producing a book um, that still hasn't come yet two years down the road. And then um, basically started, you know what, we need to advertise this book. So let's start an Instagram account. Um, and then that Instagram account essentially um, kind of descended, I would say, um, or ascended into a kind of group collaboration where we just started all posting on it, sharing things on it. Um, and it was quite interesting because it was another extension of the kind of conversations we were having in real life. Um, especially as it came to, you know, one person puts up a story of something and then someone happens to line up, a, put up another story and then three, four people have contributed to this Instagram story. And um, when you read it all together, there are sometimes these incredible sort of connections and then equally incredible, uh, I guess, dissonances or departures, um, which, found, which, which we found started to find really interesting. Um, and so I think fundamentally what we're trying to think about is what does it mean to sort of jump further into process, jump further into conversation, and maybe not, and let whatever comes out of it come out of it and, and focus perhaps less on the output of something. Um, so that's a lot of what we've been working on through the lens of, I guess, the intimate and the personal uh, and the playful. Uh, we've just kind of been thinking about how do we, you know, what are we collecting? Uh, what are we looking at? What do we find interesting? How do those things that we find interesting um, make itself into kind of conversation. Um, and I think that's really kind of one of the, seems like the foundation for a lot of what was happening with uh, our contribution here is the kind of seamless um, integration between the conversations we were having and the things we were seeing online and how we, how we had all realized that we had a practice of kind of archiving um, all these elements. Um, and so I don't know if, if Harley, if you want to speak a little bit more about kind of um the project itself and how that conversation came together um yeah i mean first of all yeah just to reiterate sandhya's thoughts thanks uh virangana for inviting us to participate in this project and i mean a big thank you to the developing uh, the development team as well i feel like we've gone back and forth and on, on so many different things uh, and we're still having conversations about uh the back end and all these different things and i think um we were sort of like going through uh the page over the last week and found ourselves kind of kind of getting addicted uh to it because i guess it, it com comes from also a very self obsessed <laughs> point of view because it's uh, our conversations our images and there's all these sort of like uh, ingrained sort of like meanings behind uh, these text positions that we sort of feel um which was like you know, just like you know, just constantly exchanging screenshots on um, on WhatsApp and things like that. And that uh, just to sort of like reiterate on a couple of things I've spoken about, I think there's definitely this idea of a decontextualized sort of like conversation, how, how images can sort of like come from different places and then become um, removed from their context and then start sort of like creating new meanings on their own. You know? So how, how sort of every viewer who comes to the page brings their own kind of like... Um, perspective that creates meaning when they uh, see what is on the page in a sense and also there was also this sort of like very sort of like generative aspect to uh, uh, the conversation the way we sort of thought about it in terms of uh, it coming from uh, eight uh, or five or eight different places different people uh, people's archives into this one space um, maybe maybe I just like show you sort of like a uh, part of the screen um, and as, as Harley's showing you, I can maybe take you through a little bit of kind of the process. It was simply all, you know, eight of us kind of thinking through um, the various images and depth images that we'd collected and uploading them as archives and having and entering them into conversations with each other's personal images or personal collections and the kind of relationships that kind of um, they create. Um, and I think I remember us spending quite some time um, looking through I think it was like 2, 3 a.m. when we were still sharing screenshots with each other of some of the connections and, and relationships that were coming up in this um, in this book. But... Yeah. I mean, I guess this really sort of like falls within our general methodology as a, a group that sort of generally privileges conversation and community. So what we... Um, do in the way we sort of like work together is really think about our process and our methods of working as opposed to sort of like the final product. Um, and in this sense, I feel like uh, this little thing we put together here really reflects that. And for us, 
um, it's become a really sort of like fun thing to engage with on a constant basis. But I don't really know how that's going to translate to uh, um, the general public or the people out there who come and see. Um, but as you said, Virangana, it is an archive that's sort of like constantly created almost in the future, right? So it's being it's kind of like drawing from these sort of like situated archives that they're all putting into this space. And then it's consistently creating these sort of new juxtapositions and combinations. Um, and so one thing we wanted to also do was to be able to preserve some of these sort of like uh, uh, constellations, right? So we've added uh, a, a button that um, helps people take a screenshot. So maybe um, if you see sort of like an interesting combination, you want to kind of remember it, you take a screenshot and it gets saved on your device, but it also gets saved in the back end. So we then have an archive uh, of all the screenshots that have been taken um, uh, over the period of, of the, the project. In a sense. So I, I don't know what we'll do with it, uh, but hopefully it'll lead to, lead to something else. Also, Alec, we should stop teasing too much. And <laughs> And uh, leave it for when it's launched also. We should stop teasing with uh, the yeah, website yeah. too much. <laughs> it's Let me remove this. How do I take this? Yeah, and I don't know, Viran and Asi we have been looking through this and, and the rest of the team. I guess I'm also curious about, you know, what sort of happened to you or what you been thinking through and you know what people what thoughts have arrived as you've been poking around this this site one of the things which um, which keeps coming back is you know when you mention that you can stop if you think that there's a certain pair of images you want to take a screenshot of the speed at which it moves there's no way to go back and say oh that's what i wanted to see that's what i wanted to stop at so there's no way for you to say wait let me go back and have a look and there's no way to say okay let me refresh the page is going to come back because that's absolutely random the way these images come up and the way you start reading them the, at the most you can maybe just decrease the speed at which this happens but it still doesn't allow you to stop it from moving and i think that's something which is quite exciting and speaks to what's happening through future landing there's um there's, that's where everyone's losing control and um, the way that these images come up it's also what's going to happen through everybody's page because there'll be and this, since this is on for a year there's going to be more added data added sometimes you'll see it sometimes you won't uh, things will change all through. So hopefully people will keep coming back to it. Right now, from what I was out there, I find myself just sitting on a page and saying, okay, wait, I need to stop. There's something else to do. And then I'll go to somebody else's page and I just get stuck over there because there is there is this almost sort of hypnotic trance sort of way of being stuck in looking at what's happening or interacting with what's happening to know where it's going to end, but there is no end because it just keeps coming at you. So hopefully that is something that will continue all through future landing into perpetuity as well through this way of losing control and allowing yourself to use this as a point of departure as well. And um, if anybody in the audience has questions, we can, if you could drop them in the Q&A box, please. And perhaps we can start taking them as well in another few minutes. Um, but until then, I just wanted to thank all of you for really giving to Future Landing what you've done. I mean, this really hasn't been just a single effort. It's all of you who've made it what it is. And um, thank you all for this. And thank you to the incredible Sven Bukati Arts Festival team as well. And I hope all of you watching will look out for Future Landing. It, we go live on Monday. And uh, keep coming back because um, we constantly have new things coming up every week every month every few months and we promise it'll be something different for every time you come back you can bookmark the future landing home page but there's nothing else that you'll be able to see from that bookmark other than just the address which will remain the same thank you Yes, thank you so much, Virangana. Thank you, everyone, all the attendees and all our panelists today. It was a pleasure hearing so much about the project. 
and the experience uh, of putting it all together. Uh, we would, uh, you know, of course, we are open for questions now for our uh, attendees here on Facebook and uh, you will all join from YouTube as well. So please uh, let us know. The team is here for the next two minutes. If you have any questions about the project, please do let us know right now in the chat box. Also, uh, the project page, which will go live on the 14th, is, is on the chat box, including all detailed bios of each and every uh, participant, each and every panelist that we had here is on the chat box. So please feel free to browse, browse through their profiles, their pages, and uh, show them a lot of virtual love. And also for uh, all the upcoming uh, projects and the programming of Serendipity Arts Virtual, please, uh, you can visit our social media pages on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to stay updated. And also check out the entire range of projects that we're doing in a part of Serendipity Arts Virtual on our website, which is again, www.serendipityartsvirtual.com. So there are a lot of wonderful workshop talk sessions and other curated projects lined up for you all. And as part of our virtual endeavor. And if we have any more questions, uh, we'll just wait for two more minutes. I think the project page is again, it's, it's visible on the on the chat box again. So you can please bookmark as Virangana said, you can bookmark this page and as, as we go live on the 14th, you'd be able to see the whole project. Thank you everyone again. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure having you all, and uh, we hope to see you virtually, and we hope you all have a very, very good evening. Thank you so much, and a great weekend.